Uh, what's up, everyone? Uh, Ian Sagstetter here from Zek Hub and coming to you with a new show idea, kind of combining the ideas of Zek Weekly and Zek Daily into one show. Let me know what you think of the format. But we're going to kick it off with going over a TLDR, or as I like to call it in the Zek Weekly newsletter, a ZLDR of all the things happening in the Zcash ecosystem. So if we look back to October 24th, the Electric Coin Company released 530. And as they've mentioned in previous blog posts and previous communications out with the community, their number one priority is updating the Zcash protocol and wallet SDKs that they, the ECC wallet SDKs, to help third party providers fix wallet syncing issues. Um, this increased on chain transaction load has caused a lot of un unacceptable sync time for many users, and ecosystem partners are also affected. So, with 530, a lot of the node. Um, issues with people running full, um, like Zcash full nodes, I believe, up to this point have been mitigated. There are still a few out there, but the ECC team is working on ensuring that everyone has fasting times and are able to access their Zcash D nodes. And that also affects a lot of different um, wallet providers with the SDKs. And they're continuing to work on that and continuing to solve for these issues. And this was the latest release that saw a number of different performance improvements um, to the Zcash D uh, node. So if you have any questions or any just want to dive into this deeper feel free to check out this blog that is linked in the description and next congratulations to the zcash foundation engineering team they recently tagged their first release candidate of zebra zebra 100 rc0 the alternative zcash node implementation written in rust so obviously if you are familiar with the Zcash ecosystem. Zcash Foundation has been working on this for quite some time, and getting this release candidate out there is a massive, massive, massive feat for them. And you can actually see now with this little part here, the alternative Zcash node implementation is now running on mainnet, and they are excited to see that Z Zebra nodes are now appearing on the Z on the blockchain node explorer. Sorry. Um, yeah, this is really cool just to see like all of these, all of this work come into fruition, and that now this is live and running on mainnet. Just again, congratulations to the Zcash Foundation engineering team. And just if you read this third part here, um, they are they have solved a lot of outstanding bugs and issues that could have affected security and performance, and they are now engaging with auditors to ensure that the Zebra code is confident, um, that they're confident in the Zebra code security and stability. So again, shout out to the Zcash Foundation engineering team and great stuff with them. Something else that came out over the last you know week or so uh, ECC dropped its 30-year vision, and this is a relatively long blog that goes of what Zcash is today. This was released on its sixth birthday, so it was kind of like a review from Zcash's inception up to its sixth birthday. And now they're going off this 30-year plan that has a 30-year roadmap based on establishing a new baseline UX foundations, proof of stake and interoperability by 2025, and the world-class UX for Zec to be delivered. And in the hands of consumers by 2032, and then getting that UX and Zach accessibility to billions of people. So if you read the blog, it works back from 2052 all the way to um, the next four months. So establish that new baseline, just ensuring that the wallet SDKs for ECC are up and to a level that Zcash users expect and deserve, and then also looking at the definition or proxy for global ZEC user counts in research and engineering have defined and communicated a revised three-year roadmap inclusive of the user growth objectives, proof of stake, and interoperability. So a lot of really interesting stuff um, in this article and was really cool to read. You know, obviously, um, I'm a part of the team that posted this out there into the world. So when I first read it, I was really excited to get it out to everybody and think there's a lot of good stuff in here. Um, obviously, I think a lot of people might not, um, what's the word I'm looking for, like see eye to eye with ECC on a lot of these different things. And that's why it's important that people go into the forums and the different avenues that are available to the Zcash community to go out and voice their opinions on how, on things that they might not agree with or things they would like to maybe see done differently. Uh, go into the Zcash forums and kind of respectfully voice those opinions and provide arguments for and against. If you agree with this, great voice your support as well. The next bit we're going to look at here, oh, this is the TLDR. So the future of Zcash being accessible to billions. So when, yeah, that's a big differentiator that I want to make aware people aware of. When that Zcash, to, this is how I interpret it, but when Zcash to billions is mentioned, it's more like Zcash is accessible to billions of people and easy to obtain for the billions of people that might want to use it. So if 100 million of those billion people use Zcash, the, the accessibility aspect of it is making sure that people can get access to private cash 
on the internet if they want to. And those, you know, those three, those three, like the TLDR here, you're laying out that foundation for the world class UX for Zek, the Zcash token. So building around the token and making that token accessible to people, an interoperable Zcash protocol built on proof of state consensus. ECC has mentioned that they are in support of um, moving Zcash from a proof of work consensus mechanism over to a proof of state consensus mechanism. And I think one of the bigger pluses about doing that is potentially more interoperability with different L1 blockchains that have different functionalities that Zek could port over. And then while it might not maintain the private the privacy features, or maybe in the future it could you know port over to a chain and maintain its privacy features, but having Zek more accessible to, let's say, borrowing lending platforms on like a DeFi protocol, et cetera, that is something that I think ECC is very interested in. And you can probably gauge that interest by like the DeFi Alchemist position being available, and then all, them also mentioning interoperability and having Zek be multi-chain, and then delivering that world-class UX for Zek, so encompassing all of those things that an interoperable proof of state consensus, a good good wallet infrastructure, making it accessible so people can buy it via an exchange or get it in a peer to peer fashion, developing all of those things in order to make it accessible and have that user experience be good for billions of people. So that's what I took from the blog. People may have interpreted it differently, um, but that was my personal opinion, not my ECC official like affiliated opinion, my personal opinion when I read that blog. So the next little bit, ECC is in Lisbon. This is a picture of ECC's head of growth marketing, Chris Tomio, and he looks absolutely fantastic. And in this picture, he is quoted as saying, we talk about privacy as being a human right, but I would like to take it a step further and say privacy is essential to being human. So this is what Chris is saying, obviously really beating on that message that privacy is normal and that people need to kind of take back that privacy that they may have lost over the last, let's say, 20 to 30 years. And Zcash is obviously a great way of doing that. ECC is in Lisbon discussing Web3 privacy with its, with its various partners, attending um, various different speaking engagements and different like co-working, co-working sessions, etc., and ensuring that the people within the crypto ecosystem, the broader ecosystem, our partners and non-partners included, are understanding what ECC is working on, what Zcash is potentially working on as a whole, and how Zcash fits into this broader crypto economy and how private cash will fit there in the future. So that is the ZLDR um, of the last, let's say, week or so. I know I've missed a lot of things here and I apologize. Oh, I missed like the biggest thing. It was Zcash's birthday. So uh, sorry for, sorry for, Ble like blurting that out there. I just wanted to make sure I got this bit covered. It was Zcash's sixth birthday, and to celebrate, ECC was giving away five Cypher Cypherpunk Zero NFTs and one collectible toy. You can follow the instructions here to join that uh, contest, giveaway, competition. I think giveaway is probably the best word. And yeah, so Zcash's sixth birthday, obviously industry-leading privacy tech. Everyone that I hear when I go to conferences, it's like, oh, we're building in the privacy space. I would say 90% of those projects are building upon the things that Zcash had built originally. So Zcash, as well as providing this private digital cash in this crypto economy and, if you, like, and making that accessible to billions of people, it's also providing the groundwork and the infrastructure for all of these different privacy projects um, building in the space. So I think that's really cool. And like, I think that's a really good thing that Zcash is so well respected. And to celebrate all of that, ECC is doing a giveaway. So happy birthday, Zcash, and happy birthday kind of to everyone that's working on it. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but congratulations to everyone that is working on Zcash and trying to forward its mission and get it wide, widely adopted within, within the world. So the next thing I wanna to touch on here is kind of like the next segment of this show. I should probably do like a, a segue or something of that nature. Um, is this idea of like community events because it's something that I did recently. I went to Miami University and was given a really good opportunity to speak to students and do like an in-person event with the students there within the blockchain club and the blockchain course. And I had a lot of thoughts after and I thought like, wow, like we build all these relationships online and it's really easy to get like the information of Zcash into people's hands through like a digital format or digital means, but going in person really builds relationships and, and allows people to really learn the things that we're trying to get across to them. So like when I was at a conference maybe a month ago or two months ago, I listened to a talk around Bitcoin and human rights activism and it really strengthened my conviction in working like within cryptocurrencies and working on you know permissionless money 
because I heard how important it was for people in other parts of the world who are using this like in their everyday lives, right? So that kind of carried into my Miami University event and I thought to myself like, wow, we really need to scale. We being myself or people who I might, may work with or may collaborate with, we need to think about how can we do these in-person events more often and really build, build, build those meaningful relationships and connections. And I just wanna give a shout out to a few people. So first is Madison Parks. If you don't know Madison, she is the Web3 Events Manager at Edge App, which is a wallet, a multi-currency cryptocurrency wallet that supports Shielded Zcash. And she put on this great event with Zcash Media and Edge, um, Edge Wallet App in San Diego, where they watched the Zcash Media documentaries and then also had a Zcash meetup. And that is a really awesome thing to do because that is spreading the mission of Zcash within the San Diego crypto ecosystem. And just wanna give a massive shout out to Madison there. The next one here is Life of Jacob.eth, who is a Zcash global ambassador based in South Florida doing like, if you guys follow uh, life of Jacob .eth on Twitter, there's like a lot of videos and a lot of like tutorials and a lot of different like screenshots, et cetera, of him, him using uh, the Flexa app to buy things like coffee or food using Zcash, right? So I understand some people out there are like, oh, that's not peer to peer, you're using a third party payment provider, but it's still providing, you know, people the opportunity if they hold Zcash in a Zcash wallet, they can just download Flexa to a quick swap, super easy, and go and buy things using their Zcash if they wanna use Zcash as their primary currency to buy things, right? Like some people wanna use dollars to spend, save in Bitcoin or Zcash or whatever, or your Zcash to spend. I don't I don't know, it's your currency. Use it however you like. Understand there are sometimes privacy implications when you use a currency to buy things, especially when you're sending it to a transparent address. But nonetheless, it is a really good, cool thing to see that they're going out into the community and they're going out and they're buying these things and they're holding these meetups and he's having like this community built around like buying things with Zcash and it's interactive because we did that recently with another group um, ECC did that was part of like an activity. We went to a Dunkin' Donuts and bought coffee and donuts and everything with the Flexa app and that really interactive experience of like receiving Zcash, transferring it into like, let's say like your Zcash wallet, your savings account and then Flexa is like your checking account, kind of seeing that correlation and then going and buying it is really, really like, it's providing people this hands-on experience that they can actually use this as a currency. And it might not be the peer-to-peer -peer future that or utopia that we envision in the future, but it's setting those foundations for them to learn more about it and then become more, you know, wanting to become more invested, not invested from a financial standpoint, but invested in like, oh, I'm gonna learn more about this currency. I'm gonna learn the different functionalities, different use cases, et cetera. So these events are really, really awesome and they really, imprint like someone's mind like hey you can actually use this thing and it has utility in the real world so shout out to life of jacob.eth and then this last little bit i want to go and give probably the biggest shout out of all and this is not like saying that other efforts in the community and the ecosystem at large are not as important but i do want to give a massive shout out to zcash nigeria they've really taken on this like idea of in-person events and really driving people to use Zcash in real life um, to another level. If you follow them on Twitter, you see all the time that they're teaching people about Zcash, they're teaching people about privacy and cryptocurrency in general. And people are now realizing like, whoa, I have this opportunity to have like private money. This is super cool. And not only are they going out into the universities, they're going out into their local communities and they're teaching people about Zcash or teaching people about crypto and how they can actually like use it in the real world. And providing this type of education and this hands-on experience is just, you know, it's like another level of commitment. And I want to give them a massive shout out because doing things online is difficult and it's not always um, like the easiest thing to do to manage online communities. Like there's a lot of difficulty and a lot of, you know, different things you have to navigate within that. But going out into the real world is just a different, is it like a different animal, different beast and going out there and doing this constantly and having the bandwidth to put yourself out there and take on like that emotional energy of like having to speak in front of people and kind of go through that opportunity of, wow, what if someone rejects like this opportunity to learn about something, right? So you're taking a lot more of a risk in my opinion, doing things in person. So I want to give them a massive shout out because I think what they're doing is really, really important. And I think that Sometimes while you might say, well, this type of activity might not scale and might not get to like tens and thousands, hundred thousands of people, I would argue that like it gives the people managing 
like these relationships and managing these education processes, it gives them more credibility and it gives them perhaps more clout in the way that they could scale their efforts to different in-person events and reach more people that way. So I think there's obviously different trade-offs doing things IRL and doing things online, but I do want to give a massive shout out to Zcash Nigeria for all the work that they're doing. And if you guys haven't like followed them on Twitter, 100% recommend that you follow them on Twitter. Their Twitter is right here and it's actually got a Z address. So if you want to donate um, to them and support their efforts, I would recommend doing that as well. So kind of to sum all of that up, I think that you know within these IRL events, I think they have different trade-offs, but I think that ultimately they do create more meaningful relationships and they kind of create a more lasting impact on the people that are receiving like the education and being a part of like the group that's learning. So I would just encourage everyone within the community to consider different ways to do things in real life and get more people within different crypto ecosystems involved in learning about Zcash. That doesn't necessarily mean starting like your own Zcash meetup or um, going out and like hosting like events at Chipotle or Dunkin' Donuts or hosting like an event in a brewery. Those are all like great ways to get people involved in Zcash. I know, I, I think Zcash Charlotte or Charlotte Zcash has done events at breweries before. And I think Boston Zcash has done that as well. Super cool like environments. I've done Bitcoin meetups at breweries and that's always like a good environment because it's like a little more relaxed, laid back and people are more open to like different conversations because the setting's a bit slower. But if you don't have the bandwidth um, or maybe even the community of people to organize one of those events individually just for Zcash, check out different like local blockchain associations or different local meetups that are more receptive to learning about different cryptocurrencies and different projects in, in, in the broader crypto ecosystem. And you can go into those places and you can start teaching people how to use Zcash, teach them about Flexa, teach them about shielded addresses versus transparent addresses, show them a block explorer. And those are really good opportunities to learn and provide people education in that way. So that's the takeaway from this week. Uh, if you can do a in-person event and teach people about Zcash, strongly encourage you to do so. And if you do so, share it on Twitter and we'll, we'll amplify and promote it. So that's it for this week of this weekly show format. They're gonna be testing out over the next few weeks. Let me know what you think of the format. Let me know what you think of the content. It's absolute garbage. Tell me never to do it again. If it's good, we'll keep kicking on and keep producing it. Guys, thank you so much for your time and have a great day.